Hi guys, in this video we will be going over another basic sorting algorithm, bubble sort, and we'll be looking at its runtime, and then at the end I'll go through some pseudocode to write bubble sort. Bubble sort is a popular sorting algorithm, but it is not one of the most efficient ones. It works by going through a series of iterations, and on each iteration through an array, so in this case we have an array of length 6, we look at adjacent pairs of elements. So I'm going to just label the indexes real quick. So on a single iteration, we look at all of the adjacent pairs of elements. So we look at 7 to 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 2, 2 and 6, 6 and 1. And as we go through and look at these pairs, we want to swap them. So for the example on this first pair of the zeroth index and the first index, the seven and three values, we want to swap those values if they are not in increasing order. Because our goal is to get an array that is in increasing order at the end of this. So we have three and seven. Now we look at the next adjacent pair, which is the swap seven and the four. Well, these are also not in order, so we'll swap Next, we look at the second and third indexes, and once again, they're not in order, so we switch them. We continue this process until we're all the way at the dead end of our array, and we're at the fourth and fifth index, so the last adjacent pair. And so finally, the last one, we switch to seven and one, we get one and seven. So that was a single iteration. And if you can tell, well, this 7 right here, it used to be right here at this 0th index. So a key thing to remember about bubble sort is that on a single iteration, you move the next largest or the largest, uh, because we're on the first iteration, to the far right of the array. So like in this iteration, we moved the 7 all the way to the end. In the next iteration, we only have to look up the first 4 or 5 indexes and move the next largest into this 4th spot right here. So let's go through that real quick. So this is the second iteration we're going to go through right now. And we already have, as I stated before, we already have that 7 in place. So we're going to just look at the 0 through 4th indexes. So we take a look at 3 and 4. They are in order, so we keep them like that. Next we look at the 4 and 2. They're out of order, so we swap them. Now we have 2 and 4. Next we look at the 2nd and 3rd indexes, the 4 and 6. They're in order, so we're good. We look at the 6 and the 1, and they are out of order, so we want to swap them. So we now have 1 and 6 here. Well, we got the 6 where we wanted it, so we can continue this process. So for the sake of time, I'm going to go really quickly through the next few iterations. So this is the third. Well, we swap these in order, in order. The next pair would swap is the one and the four. So we got two, three, one, four. So this is the third iteration. And now this is the third largest element in that spot. Let's move on to the fourth iteration. Uh, well, two and three are already good. The one and three though have to change. So we have one, three, and look, that three is good. It's in sorted order. The fifth iteration is just this, these two elements, the two and the one. 
So once we swap them, we have our elements in sorted order. So for the runtime, let's imagine instead of having this length six array, we have an arbitrarily long length n array. So I'm just gonna change this up a little bit. So this would be the n minus first position and this is the nth position. And it'll just denote the rest by these dots. Well, let's think about how this algorithm worked. Well, we looked at adjacent pairs on each iteration. So as you can see, I'm working my way from the left of the list to the right of the list. And I'm looking at two values each time. So I think we can say that this is order n. So we look at order n adjacent pairs. Next, we need to figure out how many iterations we have to do to get our list completely sorted. So let me real quick change up the array that I have here and put it back so that we have you know, seven here, six here maybe, and then two and one. Well, the key thing to know about when you're counting the iterations is that while this seven might move to the end of the array right here and be the last element, the smallest element, which in this case we're gonna say is one, only moves a single position on each iteration. So because we have a single move back per iteration, in the worst case, we're gonna have to do as many iterations as there are like numbers in our array, or maybe we'll have to do one less, but we're gonna have to do the number of swap backs and iterations on the order of n. So on the order of n iterations. So this is uh, the adjacent pairs we look at on a single iteration. And that's order of n. And now we just said that the number of iterations we have is order n. So that gives us a runtime of O of n squared. Um, so this is the runtime. Uh, we also can really quick do the space requirement, the space complexity. And well, that's pretty simple. We didn't need any extra space to do this. We just swapped elements. We just swapped adjacent pairs of elements. So all we need is the list itself. So all we need is just this list. Sorry, that is getting a little messy. So that is order n. We will finish this video by going through the pseudocode for bubble sort. So we'll begin by defining our function. So we'll do definition of bubble sort. And we'll have this function take in a list of numbers and we'll just call that nums for short. Next, we're gonna just define a variable called n, which is just gonna be the length of the numbers. And we'll find this useful when we're iterating through the array. Next, we will need a for loop, which iterates, that uh, represents the number of iterations that we will need in the worst case scenario. So we'll do range n. After this, we will have another for loop. And this time, this for loop is kind of representing the adjacent pairs that we'll have to deal with. So we'll say that this is in range 0 to n minus i minus 1. So I explicitly wrote out this 0 right here because I wanted to show that that's the 0th index. And then the n minus 1, so that negative 1 comes from the fact that the last element we care about is this because if we are looking at adjacent pairs in our the rest of our code we'll just have a little mention that we have an n plus 1 value right here. So we don't want to go beyond our list over here. Okay, and then also the minus i is because on each iteration we put the largest element to the back of the list. So that back of the list is sorted um, after each i iteration. So we sort, we, we have one more value that is sorted after each iteration. Okay, so the last step is to compare the, the adjacent pairs. So to compare like 
this 7 and 6, for example. Well, to do this, we'll have an if statement. We'll do if array jth element. So we're looking at the jth element right now. So any one of those elements. So this could be j. And if that is greater than array j plus 1, well, in this case it is, we just want to swap array j and array j plus 1. So in this example, the 7 and the 6 were in fact uh, in the wrong order, so we would swap it up. So we'd have this be 6 and then 7. And so to just kind of recap the runtime, we can say that this swap function is constant, O of 1. Uh, we have two nested loops. Loops are going to be, this is on the order of n. It's bounded by n because all values are n or less. And this is in range. This one right here is in range n, so this is also O of n. So if we multiply these things together, we get our runtime that we expected of O of n squared. Thank you for watching this video. If you have future video requests in computer science, math, uh, machine learning, etc., please send me an email at uh, keithglearning at gmail.com. Thank you.